thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks for those of us joining online. And um, we got some special guests up here. Julio, Jim, Yon, all Jays, apparently. Uh, you can see these gentlemen decided to wear matching shirts today, um, which is um, incredible. And uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, every single um, uh, once a quarter, around here four times a year, we have what's called a Mission Sunday. And Mission Sunday is simply we want to highlight the fact that um, we have a vision here at North Central to see the gospel transform every heart, home, and neighborhood, not only here in central New York, but around the world. And we have people uh, who call themselves missionaries, and they travel all around the world. And we have missionaries locally in, uh, in our community and around the United States. And um, one of the ways in which we kind of live out this missionary identity as a church family is through our student ministries. And our students, uh, every year, take a trip to Arrowhead Bible Camp, and they go to something called the James Project, and uh, they are living out a missionary identity. And so if you don't know, this is Jim. He's our student ministries director. This is Julio. Uh, he is on the board. Uh, he, he is married to Chrissy, which is his main claim to fame around here. And uh, he's also on the student ministry team as well. So they're going to tell us a little bit about what the James Project is, if you're not familiar with it, how we can pray and get involved. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about student ministry as well, kind of so you can kind of get a picture of what they're doing in the student ministry and what it looks like for the rest of the year. So... Thanks for coming up here. Um, tell us a little bit about the James Project, what it is, when it is. Yeah, yeah, so that's. Yeah, so the James Project is our annual North Central Students Missions Trip. Um, it's a week long missions trip where we get to go serve on the front lines alongside a Christian um, Bible camp down in Brackney, Pennsylvania, which is just across the border. Um, and their whole mission, they are basically a, a team of missionaries that have dedicated their lives to serving adults with developmental disabilities. So they provide an opportunity for those folks, um, adults with developmental disabilities, to have the experience of camp, and that's, that's kind of their motto. So they get to experience summer camp um, year-round, so it's not always just summer, but they have an amazing facility down there with a lot of things that... Uh, um, these campers can do, and, and they are programmed and geared up to really be able to love those people well. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, I think it's been a huge trip for us every year. Um, I think the impact is huge. First of all, we're asking our students and some adult leaders to give up their first week of summer vacation. So it runs from a Sunday morning until the following Saturday night, so it's a huge ask. Um, for our students, and it's that very first week of summer, that last week in June, and they're basically giving up their lives. Um, I know I think back to my summer days as a high school student, and don't, don't tell us about what you did in your summer days oh, no, I'm not as a high school student. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did in my summer days, but I know I would not be excited to be going on missions yeah, yeah. for a week. Um, so I really love the hearts of the students that have gone. I love seeing, um, you may see some pictures up here behind us. You can just kind of see how our team has grown over the years, how our students have grown over the years, um, because you saw some of them probably young and then older, um, how I've shrunk and grown over the years on that missions trip. Um, but most of all, I think, um, you know, it's, it, it's just, it, it's awesome to kind of, you know, what, what's cool is our tasks and our involvement in that camp has grown over the years. Um, so, so we are able to make a bigger impact because our team is bigger, we're more experienced, we're more involved, they trust us more. And we get involved in all sorts of things, cleaning the kitchen, cleaning or working in the kitchen. So galley work, prep, um, cleaning dishes, setting tables to, um, you know, teams that keep the facilities clean. Um, we, we are able to, they call it immersion, where you're basically dug right into the programming of the camp and you get to actually buddy up with these campers and create relationships with them. You get to lead arts and crafts. Um, we, uh, we work together and we do their Bible and chapel times and put on little skits for them. Um, and then we even, you, you know, you saw us chopping and splitting wood and things like that. I mean, we get right down to, uh, um, you know, I mean, doing some, some pretty heavy projects, too, to help support the facility. And that's because, just like anything else, I think they're struggling with, um, you know, this, this new world and, and finding help. And any way that these people can come in for a week and help support them and allow them to focus on their mission um, is huge. So, so we get an opportunity to do that. Yeah, I mean, you can see all the you can see the pictures behind us. I mean, 
I mean, I think there's maybe a, maybe a stigma when you think, oh, what, a, what do high school kids do these days? They just play a bunch of video games, or are they just on their phones all the time? Well, maybe they do that, but they also, we have students who spend an entire week of their lives uh, going and doing some of the dirtiest <laughs> uh, cleaning stuff, some of the hardest work, but then also investing their lives in people who um, really, who just, who, they just selflessly giving of themselves to build relationships with people who are really like a lot of a lot of times people don't really are not really concerned with those people and giving them an experience that they're going to have for the rest of their lives and they're going to remember so um, we're grateful for our students so we're grateful for the the, the fact that god is working in their hearts and uh, the impact that we've seen and how long you've been doing this how many years have you been going down there um well so the the mission started long before myself and even pastor christian um pastor rob kirk I think is the one who started leading our teams down there, and I believe he had a connection with them when he was in a church uh, in Binghamton. So um, it's been going on for quite a few years. This is my fifth year. Um, I know Christian's team went down a couple of years before that, and, and, and Rob is going down there a couple more even before that. So for, aside from maybe a couple of gaps because of COVID and, and things like that, we've been consistently serving alongside of them. And it's, it's created a great, I think, um, partnership with that facility. We also go back there and we do our fall retreats there. And, um, you know, we've really just kind of um, built up this great uh, opportunity to help support and invest in that camp down there. A student and I, a couple weeks ago, um, we had an opportunity to get a bunch of new mattresses donated to them. So we rented a van and hauled them all down there to them. And it was a, it was a huge impact for them to get a bunch of mattresses that were donated from uh, um, Ray Moore and Flanagan. So, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, so, that's, so a really self, self, that's a little self-serving. We know that because you want to sleep on those mattresses when you're there that's for the very weekend. True. I actually already well, you called know what you one did of them because it was super thick. Yeah, yeah, so we, hopefully, yeah. Hopefully he follows through on that. Yeah, Jim week. hid one in one of the back closets, <laughs> so the week he's there, he gets a brand new mattress. Yeah. Um, nice. So I mean, so we, I mean, the co- what's the cost? How much does it cost to go there? Yeah, so week? so it costs a student. They really only charge us for room and board. So uh, you know, they put us up in like camp-like facilities. And um, they feed us three meals a day for that, for that period of time. So the cost is 175 bucks a student. I mean, you can't even go to McDonald's and eat for 175 bucks. I can't bucks take my week. family to McDonald's for less than $175 these yeah, days. Exactly. You say. exactly. So, uh, I mean, it, the value is huge, I think. You know, and I know it's easy to think sometimes. I mean, obviously, all of our life is a mission, and this is something that we, that we try to instill in our students. But an opportunity to go on a mission trip, not everybody can, you know, shoot across the country and go on these big mission trips. And this gives our students an opportunity to be on mission, be the hands and feet of Jesus um, at a low cost, um, you know, not too far away way. So, yeah. So here's what you can do. If you're interested, there's, I mean, $175 is still $175. It's a decent amount of money, right? And so uh, there are some students who are limited by the cost, who cannot go because of the cost. So what we're asking you to do, if you are interested in specifically sponsoring some students to go, we would love for you to give to that and say, I'm going to pay to go change this student's life, have a life-changing experience for them, and to change the lives of all the campers who go there, which is the primary point, is to change their lives, help them have an incredible week uh, of camp. And obviously, this is a it's a Christian camp, so they're pointing these, uh, these campers' hearts to Jesus, which has ripple effects through their families. Their families feel cared for, um, and it kinda, it, it, that gospel transformation, every heart, home, and neighborhood that we are aiming for, we have a partner that can kind of um, multiply that impact all over places that we individually as North, North Central people would never be. So we would love for you to consider and prayerfully consider uh, giving and sponsoring. If you want to do that, go right on the app. You can give it. Uh, click the missions thing, and in the memo, just put... Um, uh, James Project, right? Just put the memo uh, James Project in there, and we will get that money to them. If you want to write a check, write out James Project and give it in the giving box on the back end. But um, uh, thank you for uh, people who have done that in the past. We'd love for you to prayerfully consider doing that again. I believe if, if, it's, if it's not there, too, I, I think there'll actually be a giving option in the app that'll say sure. sponsor a, a North Central student. Um, so that, that should be there shortly if it's not already. Yeah. I just want to reiterate, um, you know, Jane's project, the retreats that we have, it's kind of help us, helped us build the community that these guys have. So um, you, every time these guys go to Jane's project, they go to winter retreat, fall retreat, the stories that they come back with, the, the tight-knit group that comes back, um, and then there's just the opportunity to serve. You know, it's very impactful for these guys, and, you know, I love hearing, you know, about some of the stories when these guys come back. So um, just prayer, prayerfully consider, um, you know, contributing to these guys so yeah yeah that's true connection i think is, is is one of the biggest pieces i mean building that community yep um okay so tell us a little bit i mean so this is the summer for for students right i mean you tell us um 
tell us about, you used to mention it's a big commitment. It's a financial commitment, right? It's $175, which is $175. It's, it's no small amount of money. But for you and for your, for your team, um, tell us about the commitment that it takes as a team the, to, yeah. to have leaders go and spend a week of their life. Um, they're usually, I mean, they're, I'm, they're all professional people. They all absolutely, have jobs. Yeah. They're all grown-ups. They're not leading teenagers unless they are some level of competency yeah, no, and responsibility, right? Yeah. So what's the, what's the investment that our leaders Yeah, the making? investment, obviously, for the adults that go and serve on that team is, is huge. Um, you know, we have some leaders that are going for their fourth or fifth time. I mean, these people are putting their life on pause. They're, they're taking vacation. They're, uh, you know, juggling their schedule around to be able to make it work so that they can go and be there. Because I think the, the way the, the work is and the way we have to create teams, um, it is not as easy to have people that are only part-time there. Um, we really need people that are all in for the mission and to just be available. So we're excited that we have uh, uh, myself and uh, uh, Jayla Williams has, has been since she was a student, so she'll be a big piece of it. We have, uh, we have a new uh, youth leader. We have a new couple that's joined our team, the Halberts, and Jared is excited about joining our team. And then we actually have a couple. As a matter of fact, he's walking in the door right there. Look at that. Um, everybody yeah. look at him. Um, <laughs> But uh, that's good, Jim. Uh, Real good, yeah. You, hopefully, you anyone want to join the student ministry team yeah. and get, you know, get pointed out when you show up? the mission yeah. strip. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but <laughs> this interview's over. We're gonna <laughs> limit the damage. <laughs> but seriously, um, and and then we're actually bringing back some college students too, um, who have you know have been on the trip. They're veterans of the trip, and we're gonna use them in some ways to help lead that team too. So we're excited for that. Um, but it is a commitment. It's a huge commitment from our, for our team. Um, so, uh, but, I mean, that's what God does. I mean, he, he, he puts it on people's hearts. He, he works in them. He works through them. And God always has a way of just making that trip work out. Um, there have been times where, uh, in the planning purpose, we're like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to get everybody there? How are we going to lead those, that team? And like you saw, I mean, the, the crew was almost 30 people last year, which is huge. And then we've actually invited in a couple of local area churches that we partner with or, um, you know, just get together with throughout the year. And um, we've invited them into it this year as well. Um, so we're hoping we get some participants from them and some leaders from them as well, um, because I think it's huge for these other churches to see the impact they can make. And um, who knows, maybe someday they're leading their own week down there and helping to support that camp. So, yeah. so I hope you can kind of, kind of see the scope of like our student. If you don't know much about our student ministry and kind of what goes on, there's a, the scope is actually relatively large, right? I mean, taking a week to go to camp, um, a couple uh, during Easter, uh, they took three days to go to youth convention and staying up all night and uh, spending a lot of long hours um, investing in our kids and our students. Um, on top of that, every single week, the routine and the rhythm of doing um, a Wednesday night service. And then that's not even the important part of student ministry. The important part is really connecting with all of the students outside of all of the formal programming stuff that we do. That's where the real life change and transformation happens. And so um, as a leader, leader and a director, you mean like we're appreciative of the fact that that's what you've been doing. And you've been doing this for a while. How yeah. long have you been doing it for? Yeah, so I've been all in on student ministry since I started serving under Pastor Christian back in 2015. So, right. um, you know, I served under him for a lot of years. And, uh, you know, my favorite part was just being able to cultivate a relationship with these students and um, invest in them. My wife and I have never been able to have kids, unfortunately, but having 30 or 40, a community of 30 or 40 kids has, has filled a huge hole in our hearts. And uh, um, so I've been doing it a long time. And then I, I've had the opportunity to lead since 2019, the ministry. Um, and, and we've seen it grow and flourish even through a pandemic, which I think was pretty amazing. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing it quite a while. Yeah. Um, and as you know, we're kind of in the middle of a series called, um, you know, Love Your Church and How Do We Care for Each Other. And that specific kind of we're going to. We're going to talk about today uh, in PD's message, but one of the ways in which we, as a church leadership and a church family, want to we care for each other is offering opportunities to, um, you know, to to take some breaks. And yes. you have a bit of an announcement to kind yes, of share with our yes. family. So, so um, you know, I mean, my student community is very in tune with this, but um, and you guys probably saw it from the from the pictures, but um, you know, since COVID, I think that there's been a lot of a, a lot of new challenges for me professionally. Um, leading my team at work, uh, who is now remote, and learning how to connect them and, 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 you know, still create that team camaraderie has been a huge effort and a real challenge. Um, and then, you know, unfortunately, 
the enemy does what he does. And during COVID, and there was some seasons of isolation, um, before COVID, I, for those of you that don't know, I had lost about 150 pounds. I've always been somebody that struggled with my weight. And I was feeling good and healthy and lighter. And then, unfortunately, you know, isolation sets in. And, you know, we're all stuck at home. And 100 pounds of that have seeped back in. So, um, you know, that's been a, a little bit of an emotional challenge and a mental challenge for me. And, um, you know, it leaves me sometimes, I think, uh, you know, running on empty sometimes uh, to try to lead that team at work, to try to lead our team here, to try to shepherd this community. Um, but God does what he does, and he always seems to rise up the right people at the right time. And Julio, you know, like, like Yon was saying, he serves on the board. He's, uh, you know, he's a gifted leader. He, uh, he leads in his uh, profession, and um, he's hungry for church leadership. So um, when I first brought this, this to uh, Dan, and Yon, or Dan and Jonathan about a year ago or so, um, you know, one of, the, one of the thoughts was, let's get Julio involved to help with some of that stuff organizationally. And that has been such a huge help for me um, to just be able to kind of take a back seat a little bit to some of the organizational stuff. Um, it has really mentally helped me a lot. But, um, you know, I still think that, you know, I still have a long ways to go mentally, spiritually, physically. And um, I think that, like Yon said, being a church family that, that can care for um, their, their, their team members and their congregation and all of that, um, you know, through a lot of prayer, I realized that because Julio's been doing this stuff so naturally, it allows me to have an opportunity in a season that I can step into a sabbatical. So um, I'm going to, you know, see through this James project, and then I'm going to actually, starting July 1st, take transition that role of student ministry director over to Julio, um, which is, he's more than capable, and I'm excited to see what God does through him. And I'm going to take some weeks off over the summer to kind of renew spiritually, physically. Um, you know, I'll still be involved. Obviously, we've got a lot of graduating seniors, still want to love them through their graduations and all of that. I'm not disappearing completely, um, but I would just, just take some, some Wednesdays off over the summer. And then, God willing, I come back in the fall, and I want to get back involved from a youth worker standpoint and really be able to cultivate those relationships again, which is really what fueled me to get into student ministry. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the opportunity it provides Julio. Sure. So, I mean, maybe if you haven't been around the church, really, you don't, like the word sabbatical it doesn't show up in like the business world and you may not understand, you don't know what that means, but um, it's a, it's just a specific break to say we're going to, he's still in a specific role. He's still in that leadership role, but he's taking a break and he's not going to participate in, uh, in, in as much in the leadership role as he is. So he's going to like take a break. He's on essentially on a, is it a paid vacation? It's not really a vacation, but it's like he's yeah. taking a break Certainly and he's, yeah. Paid. Yeah. Is so, it? <laughs> yeah. <Is it? laughs> I didn't know well, that. I just committed to something. Uh, it's not a paid vacation, yeah, yeah, but similar in that you would, you know, if you did like something like maternity or paternity leave, or you're like you're taking a specific amount of time for a break because it's scheduled. Because you know the burden of leadership is a real thing, right? Not only leading ourselves, it's very difficult to do. I mean, I, trying to lead our own lives and maintain healthy lives and rhythms, also doing that in work where you're a leader, like you said, you're a VP in, a, in an IT company, um, which is no small thing. And then also leading a team, you're on the board, right? So a bunch of a, a, a multiple different layers of wanting to be healthy. And we are committed as a church leadership team and as a church family that our people, our leaders and everybody in our church family, we care about people's health. We want people to be holistically healthy. And one of the ways we do that is we commit to have great uh, opportunities to take a break and then uh, get get healthy, get recharged, and then come back, right? Yeah. And, uh, we're, yeah. and we're grateful that we have people like Julio, who are who is serving and has uh, a lot of gifts and a lot of passion for our student ministry to seamlessly step in and say, yeah, I'll take that role, I'll take that leadership, and um, and carry it uh, and build on the momentum that we have going into the summer. So, um, so Julio, what's up? You have a mohawk. You're obviously you're obviously suited for student ministry. So. Um, I think so. Or, yeah. I, apparently, if I shave, I look like one of them. So. Yeah, so yeah. So <laughs> if he shaves, just don't talk to him like he's a teenager. But um, Julio is going to step into that leadership role. Like Jim said, right, you've been, you have, uh, you've been stepping in, doing some, a lot of the administrative and system stuff or helping um, grow the team, lead the team, and do some of that. So tell us a little bit just about your background and then why uh, student ministries and why this, this fits for you. Yeah, so professionally, um, just so you guys are aware, I'm an underwriting manager at Liberty Mutual. So what I do on a daily basis is I'm investing in my employees and 
Um, that is something I'm particularly passionate about. I'm passionate about investing in people. And um, it's ironic, our church series right now is Love Your Church, but I truly say this, I do love it here. I do love this church, and I love those students up there. And they've, um, I've been on the student ministry team for about, you know, we've been here for four years. You know, I've been on that team for about four years now, too. So Day one, you got a concussion, right? Yeah, the very day. first day, he got a legitimate concussion, so you know he's in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, day one, um, actually it might have been week one or week two, I'm not sure, but I actually tripped and fell and put my head through the brand new Kids Central. Yeah, place. there's a hole, so, yeah. <laughs> nothing like uh, student leader initiate, yeah. initiation. That's so. why he's still here, because he's actually <laughs> still concussed. Yeah. Um, so just so you guys are aware, like, you know, I grew up, I didn't grow up a Christian. Um, I became a Christian after my baseball injury that, you know, some of you guys may be aware of, but... Um, So anytime I had a person in my life that was a positive influence on me or had an impact on me, um, they stood out. Um, And I think about one individual, you know, as, you know, a lot of us have people within our lives that have, you know, made an impact on our lives. And, you know, for me, you know, I'll just tell you a really brief story. This is going to be long, but, um, you know, I had a friend's dad. um, He um, was there for me at a young age. He had let me hit in a batting cage for free. Um, and he invested in me in a way that um, was substantial. After I had my baseball injury, he was the one bringing me to and from the hospital, um, helping me in my recovery. He was there for me in a way that, you know, kind of like how Jesus was, you know, he went to the cross for us, although we didn't deserve it. He was there for me in that same way. And this individual, you know, he wasn't in the church or anything like that, but this deeply impacted my life where, you know, after my baseball injury, having the second chance at life, you know, I'm passionate about investing in people in the same way people have invested in me. And, you know, these students, you know, we have such an opportunity. You know, I was impacted at a young age. All it takes is one person. Shout out to the leaders here. You know, all it takes is that one interaction, that one example, that one person where you never know what conversation and what that activity may lead to and how it may impact that student or that person that you're working with. So I was so deeply impacted by that so that I truly, I feel like I want to invest in people every day of my life. Um, And as for these kids, man, you know, I love being with you guys. I'm a kid at heart. Uh, I love video games. I love playing games. I love playing sports. That's Rocket League, like Jackson's saying right now. I'm a kid at heart, so I naturally gravitate to these guys. And, you know, for me, you know, just to these kids, I told these guys just a second ago, you know, I don't, I have a sprained ankle right now. I don't know how to go 50%. I'm going to give 100% devotion to these kids. I can't wait to get started to be able to invest in you guys and to give you guys part of my life. Um, I just can't wait. So, yeah, it's exciting for us just because of the fact that, I mean, obviously you're, you're married, you've got you know, your young family, just being able to even model, even again, another, another way of, of our students are being modeled for what a healthy gospel-centered marriage and family look like, um, and being another, another person in someone's life. We used to think like, okay, so it's like one leader for every five kids. Now it's completely reversed. It's like you need like five adult influences in someone's life for every kid. They need like up to five in, investments of a gospel-centered uh, person in their life. So we're, we're grateful that you are another one of those and you're going to lead the team. Um, can I ask you three really quick questions? They do something in the youth ministry called Hot Seat and they, they, they put people up on there. So can I ask you three specific questions just so some people can get to know you? For sure. All right, I don't even have them in my head. I'm just going to run. I'm just going to, uh, what's your favorite sports team? Oh, the Knicks. The, Knicks, the Knicks, okay. Nobody booed them. They're so irrelevant. No one even booed <laughs> them or cheered. There was no response. They're completely emotionless towards the Knicks. So that's how far they've fallen. The opposite of love is not hate, it's apathy. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, favorite food? Ooh, that's a tough one, considering my palate, you know. I only, have, I only have 30% of my taste buds working at any given time. Um, hibachi. All things hibachi. That's my go-to. I love it. Hibachi? Hey, it's the one person. <laughs> we know who did that, and they're not serious. They're just joking, so no one even... Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, let's see. Um, which is your favorite son? Oh, I'm just joking. Come on, we can't do that. Never mind. I'm not answering that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, that's, uh, I don't even have a third question. I couldn't come up with it. So, um, let's see. If you could go on vacation anywhere in the world, where would you go? 
So I was born in Puerto Rico. So honestly, I'd go right back to Puerto Rico. Wow. All right. Everyone's a Puerto Rican fellow. Look at everyone's so excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, good. All right, cool. Um, we want to, so, so we want to, we want to, yeah. Here. I, I just wanted to, I, I want to add one thing um, to piggyback off of that and, and to kind of go along with the love your church thing. Um, I just announced this to my students here about 30 minutes ago um, in the room upstairs. And, um, you know, I so appreciate our leader, our church leadership and how they care for their team and um, the hearts of their team. Because, you know, I, I'm not going to lie that the enemy is trying to invade my heart a little bit to make me feel like I failed or I am failing or that I am abandoning my students. And, um, you know, they, they've been, you know, I, I think that they've helped me realize through their leadership that um, part of being a leader is sometimes realizing that you're not in the best capacity to lead. And um, that's why I'm so excited about this season of sabbatical. So, um, and, I, and I do want to add, because I know some students and parents are going to be hearing this for the first time, that sabbatical has an end to it. So this is a six-month sabbatical. That's what I'm looking to do. Um, I'm going to try to unplug a little bit more over the summer, but then come back as a youth worker. And then, you know, we'll see where God brings us at the end of that six months. Um, but... Uh, you know, I'm just so thankful for our leadership team because they could have very easily, when I first went to this, been like, all right, you're quitting. Let's just move in the next person that God has in line. But they love me. They know my heart. They know my heart for this ministry and these students. And um, I love the fact that they can give me an opportunity and a season to rest like that. And uh, I'm so appreciative of them. And, and I mean, it really is an example of how we love your church because it's it's perfect. Yeah. So on a technical note, you know, if, you're, if you're a parent of students, you're in the student ministry, like nothing's going to change in terms of programming. It'll just be, if you get communicated to, it's going to come from Julio instead of Jim. Um, students, you'll still be doing the same stuff. You'll still see Jim around. He's, he's going to be here. He'll, be, um, he'll probably be doing the stuff that he really loves about youth ministry and like texting and talking to the students and less of the leadership administrative stuff and taking a break from that. Um, so you'll see, I mean, pretty seamless. And we're, we're really proud of the fact that it's a testament to your leadership have a team that we can essentially just seamlessly roll into you taking a sabbatical and coming back uh, next year um, fully fit, um, three, 250 pounds lighter than you are now. And we had, no? I would weigh 100 pounds. Well, okay, yeah, so that would be unhealthy. Don't do that. Okay, but um, we we're excited for that. So we are excited. Again, we, you, you might say, hey, stop talking about this, but we are, we're committed to, to giving you a picture of like, what does it mean to be part of, part of this church family? We love each other. We care for each other. We care for our leaders, and we, wanna, we, uh, we have a commitment to say we want to see the gospel transform our students, uh, our high school, high school students, and we do it through great leaders, but our leaders can't do it if we're not healthy and we're not cared for. And so hopefully this is an inspiration to you to even say, how do I, you know, get, get ourselves spiritually and emotionally, mentally and physically healthy so that we can help other people do the same and, and, and ultimately point their hearts to Jesus uh, so that they can point more hearts to Jesus. And it's an, uh, uh, it's an ongoing thing that we're doing as a church family. So, um, Jim, thanks for, um, thanks for doing it for the last six, seven, eight years. Um, enjoy your next six months. I'll be at your pool every Wednesday night, just in case you know, we need anybody. Um, uh, Julio, thanks for stepping up. And Chrissy, you know, we obviously know it's a, it's a, you got three little ones, so the sacrifice is real. And that uh, Julio giving more of his time doing that, we're appreciative of, of Team Martinez and doing it. So um, uh, can you give them a round of applause before they head out of here?